Hello, good morning. Here, Humenta, if I pronounce correctly. I'm really happy to be here and in an LRC workshop in Finland. And uh, before I start, I would like to play one introductory words by European Commission. And I hope that everything will work. As previously, we tested and everything worked. Welcome to the second round of ELRC workshops. I'm Claire Berry, the Deputy Director General at DigiConnect. And I'm Ritis Mardukonis, Director General of DG Translation. We'd like to kick off this round with a few words on what we are seeking to do with the European Language Resource Coordination Initiative, how it fits in the broader context, and why your ongoing contribution is so important. And in the course of 2015 and 2016, we held the first round of ELRC workshops in all EU member states, Norway, Iceland, to gather language data to develop and improve the EU's machine translation service. And now we're taking it up a gear. Building on MT at EC, the service developed jointly by the Commission's Directorate General for Communications Networks, Content and Technology, and the Directorate General for Translation, we're now launching eTranslation, the next generation of machine translation. It will be open to all EU public administrations and run on a faster, more powerful system. You are key to making this a success. Having all of you, people from government, public administrations, translators, the academic world, indeed anyone with a stake in language, here together is hugely valuable. Thank you for being here and for contributing to this work. Before you begin today, let's put this work into the broader context. The European Union has 24 official languages. Multilingualism is one of the greatest assets in terms of cultural diversity in Europe, and yet it remains one of the most substantial challenges for creating a truly integrated EU. Although many say that English is today's lingua franca, we cannot simply assume that everyone is able or willing to communicate in English. As a matter of fact, 90% of European consumers prefer to browse websites in their own language, and 42% never purchase online products and services in languages other than their own. The EU recognises that all official languages are equal. This is enshrined both in the Charter of Fundamental Rights and in the Treaty on European Union. And the equal treatment of all 24 languages underpins the broad idea that European nations, big and small, north and south, are determined to cooperate on equal footing. EU legislation is translated into all official languages and EU citizens can communicate with the EU institutions in any official language. Language technologies can extend this to European public services to bring even wider benefits. Since the mid-90s, translations of EU law have been stored in a database that now holds over a billion sentences. This is professional, quality, human translation, and it forms the bedrock of MT at IEC, the Commission's machine translation system. Since most of these translations are legal documents, MT at IEC works best for texts with a legal flavor. We need to broaden our scope to meet other purposes. There are a very good number of reasons for taking e-translation to the next level. Over the past seven to ten years, the European Commission has invested over 200 million euros to support research and innovation in language technologies. Recent advances show that innovative implementation of natural language processing tools and services such as matrine translation can help meet the challenges of multilingualism in Europe. President Juncker has made completion of the digital single market a major priority. Information, goods and services should flow freely within the EU. To make this happen, we need to enable our citizens, businesses and public administrations to overcome the language barriers. Digital services in Europe need to be available in all languages and in many cases machine translation is the way to achieve this. So, how are we going to take it to the next level in practical terms? As you all know, uh, that language technologies are data-driven. They are only as good as the data behind them, and to improve, they need good data, hey, lots of it. We need translations in specialist fields, such as culture or medicine, and especially in plain language, so that our machine translation system can produce good results on many topics and in many styles. It's not simply the sheer volume of data that is needed to make it a success. 
to produce consistently good, relevant, and usable results, we need quality content. DG Translation pursues this by working with universities, national translation services, terminologists, and many others. DGT's field offices are precious link here, and I know many of you are working with them in connecting national and European expertise. We look forward to bringing the networks and bodies you represent together at our annual Translating Europe Forum Conference, an opportunity to highlight your contributions to ELRC. Great strides have been made towards completing e-translation. From 2014 to 2016, we've invested around 20 million euros in upgrading the current system, collecting language resources, and supporting collaborative projects that feed the core platform and deliver additional data. Following the first round of workshops in all member states plus Iceland and Norway, you, the ELRC community, have already provided over 200 data sets to develop e-translation. Thank you very much for that. It's a major contribution. But we believe this is just the beginning and that there are more resources out there that we can use to further improve the system. Indeed, we reached some important milestones in 2017 with e-translation. In July, we launched a preliminary version that can be used by information system owners to provide translations for their websites, such as electronic exchange uh, of social security information, which helps member states provide coverage for EU citizens outside their home countries. Workshops like this one today helps us to obtain data in languages that we didn't have internally, such as Icelandic and Norwegian, and also Irish, where we don't have very much. Data you sent on, for example, medicine description, information for victims of crime, or banking association terminology, can be immensely helpful in building up our own engines and enabling us, and by extension you, to provide a valuable public service. As of November 15, 2017, you can access e-translation directly from the websites to translate documents in the usual formats such as Word or Excel. This includes our first two engines using neural technology, English Hungarian and English German. Over 2018, we will switch to this new approach, which promises to yield higher quality results. Together with your data, this will allow us to better customize our service. Our aim in 2018 and beyond are to provide translation for online services, such as the online data portal, which enables users to search for EU and national law in all EU languages, or internal market information system, enabling businesses to check certificates and diplomas from any EU country. But these workshops are not only about how you can help us with data collection, they're also very much about listening to what needs you have in your country and your ideas and your inspirations. Please take full advantage of this forum to express your needs and how we can help you set up mechanisms to manage data efficiently at national level. We've set up a number of measures to help you identify, collect and provide data to CEF e-translation. Do use the help desks offering guidance on legal and technical issues and the team of experts who can guide you on effective data management practices. There's also funding available through the Connecting Europe Facility Programme for collaborative projects aiming to increase the language resources for e-translation. This will help both the EU and yourselves to provide better digital services for European citizens, businesses and administrations. Services will work across languages and they will make it easier for all Europeans to fully benefit from the digital single market. In an age of networked intelligence, it is incumbent on us to share information and ideas to help us all advance. It's through networks like this that we pull our intelligence to generate added value. This is an important opportunity to do just that. We trust that we can count not only on your support, but also on your data to further improve e-translation. And we wish you a very successful workshop. Thank you, colleagues. Um, LRC uh, action is here already starting from uh, April 2015 and uh, 
the main ob goals and objectives of the LRC LL action is to remove all obstacles to contribute language resource data by helping helping data contributors to provide resources to build better MTA system. LRC action, action uh, have a five main pillars that we are working on. And uh, first of all, it's data collection. Data collection uh, such as uh, translation memories, uh, PDF documents, actually any kind of written text, written documents that could be used, processed, and then later feed into uh, translation systems to have better translation results. Next uh, big challenge is to identify identify public needs and uh, uh, what they actually need and how how this uh, LRC ac action can help by introducing problem areas uh, in which translation is most crucial and which domain must be covered as soon as possible to provide better service for customers for 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 citizens <coughs> and through all activities it's done by engaging public sectors in all this huge network of LRC and uh, by listening public sector of their needs and their challenges and to help them to overcome all those challenges by identifying where the good data are and what to do with the data and and to believe, to make them believe that actually they they, they possess huge asset, big asset of, of uh, resources, and their resources are really valuable for 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 benefiting uh, machine translation. And LRC act as observatory of language resources. We are collecting language resources and providing providing overview of, about language resources and after processing language resources are are given back to contributors and it, it is freely usable for any future needs LRC a consortium is based on four four main main uh, partners and 30 uh, national anchor points that are, are technical national anchor points that uh, have a technical skills on how to process, how to deal with data and the public sector anchor points who helps to, to work with public sector uh, institutions and to see what, what are their needs. And LRC consortium is, is constituted of four partners. is German Center for Artificial Intelligence, Institute of uh, Speech Processing from Greece, uh, European Language Distribution Agency from France, and TILDE, that I'm representing, a company based in, in, uh, in Riga in Latvia. We are dealing with language technologies, and we are happy to be involved in this great initiative. Kiitos.